Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Oh, you know what it is. It's coffee time. We are back on the coffee train. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. I literally have no plans today. I woke up this morning with a sore throat. I was supposed to be training with my friend Jack today, but last night was just pretty rough. My throat just felt so like, um, what's the right word? Just tight and painful and just a sore throat. And even when I breathe in now, like my chest feels a little bit tight. Hopefully it's not the, uh, the C virus, if you know what I'm talking about. But my brain was telling me that coffee will help. So I'm having a coffee. Oh my God, that's so good. Why is coffee so good? So addictive. Mm. So if coffee doesn't help, I'm probably gonna go to the store and get some things. And today's probably just gonna be a bit of a recovery day. And I actually have no idea what to book today. Because when I don't train, uh, I just really don't know what to show you guys. Maybe I could show you going to a restaurant or something like that, a full day of eating. I don't know, we'll see. Um, right now, I'm just gonna enjoy this coffee chill here at the beach for a bit and then get some steps in. The horse getting terrorized by the dogs. <laughs> Well, that was a good hour and a half walk. Literally no better start to the morning than getting up, going to the beach, having a coffee, getting some steps in, getting some fresh air, and getting some sun. Ice bath, sauna. We are stacking the biohacks today. There's nobody here, so I'm thinking to go somewhere else. Oh, cheeky ab check. Okay, so I often get asked uh, about living costs in Bali. Now, I'm not going to go through them all today, but that gym that you just saw me at before, Body Factory, that's probably the most expensive gym in Bali. Um, it's 300 USD a month for the spa, like the recovery area, area and the gym. And that, that includes classes as well, I think. Now I'm at Nirvana, this gym here. This is, I believe this is the second most expensive uh, gym membership here. This is 240 USD per month. That doesn't include the classes, I don't think. So maybe that's a little bit more. I might be wrong on that, but. Yeah, like these, the gym memberships in Bali are more expensive than England. I don't know what that sounds like to you, but in England, you know, even 50 pounds a month was like quite expensive. And then I come here uh, and during COVID, Body Factory was a little bit cheaper, but even still, it was my most expensive gym membership I've ever had by a long way. But it's just kind of... I don't know, normal out here. They can get away with it because there's so many fit people here. Uh, there's just like a over, what's the right word I'm looking for? They can get away with it because there's just so much demand here. There's so many fit people, uh, so many people that want to train that they can get away with charging more. Obviously there's a lot of different gyms. Uh, some are a lot cheaper. But a lot of the best gyms, the kind of like westernized gyms, uh, they're all like, you know, between 100 and 200 dollars a month. So I guess this counts as another biohack. Coconut water, lemon juice, 
and Himalayan salt. Perfect for hydration, just exactly what I need right now. So it's not even midday yet and already I've got a walk in at the beach for like 90 minutes. So 90 minutes walking, about three hours of sunlight. Um, I'm hydrated, I've been grounded as well. So grounding, hydration, sunlight, movement and walking, they're all free. And if you eat real foods as well, you will fix 99% of health conditions, okay? The best part about biohacking and just being healthy in general is most things that you need to do to be healthy cost very little or they're almost free. But now I want to show you a big daddy biohack, okay? This thing is a beast. This is, I don't know whether you can see this, a thin air machine. Maybe some of you have heard of like a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. This is a little bit similar, but it's a little bit different, okay? So obviously you put this on and you put this on. This, this, you put this on your finger like this, right? And this measures your pulse and your blood oxygen content. And then what this does is it reduces the oxygen that you're breathing in temporarily and then when your blood oxygen falls to a certain level, it fires like hyper oxygenated air. Like, I don't know whether it's pure oxygen or not, but essentially you're restricting oxygen and then you get a burst of pure oxygen. And what this does, this is essentially the equivalent of altitude training. You know, a lot of athletes will train at altitude where the oxygen level is lower and because it's lower your body has to work harder and produce more red blood cells and become more efficient at transporting oxygen around the body but this is not just for like performance benefits this has a lot of health benefits because your body essentially goes into a parasympathetic state like when i do this uh, you'll do it for eight minutes on one minute off so it's a total of nine minutes and you'll do that five times so it's, each session is 45 minutes. I'm only on day 10 of doing this. Now, uh, this machine is like very expensive. It's like 20,000 pounds or something like that. Uh, I've got, I lent, I got lent this by my buddy, George. So shout out to George Armstrong for lending me this. Um, and I've only been using it for 10 days, but already I feel like I'm noticing some benefits. I wish I had one of these machines myself. I, I would do it myself every single day just feel great afterwards. So after doing it or, or during it, it kind of puts you to asleep or it kind of puts you in this weird state where you don't really know where you are and you, you're kind of asleep. But afterwards, you just feel so relaxed. Like I usually just have a nap afterwards because uh, I just feel so chilled out. Like my body is in such a parasympathetic state. And if you want your body to heal anything that it's dealing with, the more relaxed you can be, the better your body is going to be able to heal. So this is not just good for like improving cardiovascular fitness, but also a lot of chronic health conditions from Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, uh, diabetes. Uh, there's so many different uh, sort of chronic illnesses that can be healed with this type of therapy, which I believe is called adaptive oxygen therapy or hypoxic therapy. And what's different about this compared to hyperbaric oxygen chamber is when you're in a hyperbaric oxygen, oxygen chamber, it's just a constant level of hyper, like oxygen at a higher level than you normally would, which there's still benefits to it, but this is more adaptive in terms of it reduces the oxygen and it makes it harder for your body to breathe. And then you get a burst of pure oxygen. So it's kind of like, it's, it's almost like a bit, a bit more of a workout for your body. But because of that, uh, apparently you get more benefits from it. But like I said, I'm only on day nine or day 10 right now. But, but so far, I really like this machine and I want to get one myself. But obviously, uh, you know, it's a lot of money. And to try and get one in Bali, it's quite difficult as well. But if you haven't tried oxygen therapy or a hyperbaric oxygen chamber or anything like that, and you're dealing with some kind of chronic health conditions, I would highly recommend 
trying it out. Usually in most cities, they've got these places you can go to where you can go and you can pay for an hour session and you just lie in this chamber. Um, and if you do have that available to you and you haven't tried it before, I would highly recommend it. So I just finished the oxygen therapy now. That was 45 minutes. It didn't put me to sleep or knock me out like it normally does, but that's maybe because I've done it earlier in the day today. But even still, I'm feeling sufficiently relaxed. Hello. Thank you. I'm good. How are you? Grass fed beef pho. Bone marrow broth brisket and beef balls. Definitely getting that. That sounds amazing. Bangkok strip club noodles. Sounds interesting. You can't be half in. You need to be in or out. No, I'm very shy. Okay, so what's a la laksa? Laksa is like Malaysian soup. Yeah. You know? Like coconut. I think it's like tom tam. Tom yum. Tom yum. But Malaysian. After my morning of biohacking, I am feeling pretty good now, to be honest. But the sore throat has definitely not gone away. And usually, it seems like it's going to be a sore throat that just it's just worse at night and during the day it's not too bad but the reason this has happened is because my calories were too low this week um, and i just did too much training so i'm underfed and overtrained and that's a recipe for getting ill i've had this happen to me a few times before and this is also a good reason why when you're cutting you don't want to do an extreme cut like i've just done I'm basically showing you what not to do because if you go too extreme and you go too hard too quickly, you just run yourself into the ground, it weakens your immune system and then you end up getting ill. But um, another thing when it comes to cutting is if you do get ill and you try and maintain your calorie deficit, even if you stop training, it might not necessarily go away until you bring your calories up to maintenance. Now today it's Sunday, so I'm eating foods which I wouldn't normally eat. Uh, I'm eating here, I'm eating out. Um, I'm gonna try and track as best as possible. I'm gonna try and maintain a slight calorie deficit, but I'm not being super strict about it. Um, also, if I go a little bit over my calories, no worries because my main priority right now is to get back feeling 100%. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, I've had it before where the illness just lingers and it just doesn't go away until you end up bringing your calories up and resting properly. So Norma's going to take me to her yoga session. I'm going to ask for it to be extra, extra hard and we're going to vlog it so it should be pretty funny. It's going to die. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so we need to give the guys um, I got, I got a question for you. Right? For me? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Come closer. What is that? Right? So, there's a lot of guys that struggle with approaching women. You know, like say you're out in public, you're at the gym, you know, and a guy sees a girl. Like for example, I was at the gym yesterday and this guy was trying to pick up this girl and it was just so bad because she was filming her workout and he came over, he was like, hey, hey, is this for Instagram? And she's like, what? Like, is this for Instagram? And she's like, sorry, I don't understand. She's like, well, you're filming right now. Is it you you're filming for Instagram? She's like, oh yeah, yeah. He's like, okay, cool, let me take your Instagram. I'm like, whoa, bro, That's like a bad approach. chill, you know, like build some rapport first. So that is a good way to 
That is a good thing not to do. But if you're, how do you want to be approached? Um, it depends if I like the guy. Yeah, so if you like the guy, would you make it obvious? Would you do anything different? I'm not going to do anything, but I'm just going to like maybe smile. Okay, so you look at him, you make eye contact. Yeah, just smile. Just smile at him. And see, you know, because I like the guy who initiates. Yeah, but you're giving him a sign like, hey, yeah. I like you. Yeah, just smile. Yeah, I just don't like wait. No, no, but you make eye contact yeah. and, you, and you smile. Okay, it's so a cool. So if you make eye contact and you get smiled at, that's a that's green a light. Off. It's a green light, right? So then, 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 what would what would be the best case scenario? To approach. Yeah. I think just try to make like casual conversation first, and then, you know, not like straight away asking for your single other number. Yeah, yeah. But it's very like, Ooh. What, what, what yeah. we do? Yeah, yeah. Should be, say, so, you know, how would be open? How would you like to be spoken to? Like, making a casual conversation about what's happening at that time. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, what about if you're in the supermarket and it's just weird? Um, oh, that's a nice papaya. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like papaya? <laughs> papaya is my favorite you know, fruit. Yeah, it's just like making, I don't know, a small talk yeah. about what's happening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So I've seen a lot of guys as well like, at the beach asking girls right away, Hi, you look cute, can I make your number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if, if you're ever in Bali, guys, the best places to pick up girls, if you don't go out, that is, is number one, the supermarket. I always see hot girls in the supermarket. For some reason, I don't know why, but hot girls are always at the supermarket. Beach is always another one. And gym, gym. depending on which gym you go to, the gyms that I go to, there's never any hot chicks there, but they, they work out somewhere. I just haven't found them yet. I would say they're the best place, places, right? Or maybe coffee shops. Although it's quite hard to approach in a coffee shop because you just sat down at the table, right? Yeah, most of the people are working here, like with phone or laptop. Yeah. Okay, so they're the top three spots to pick up at. And what's a good opener? Hello? Yeah. I, I usually just say hello. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? What's your name? Uh, what? You don't like that? No, it's just like, you know, you, you literally want to get to know me. Like, what's your name? No. I don't know. I just like... It depends how you say it. Guys, yeah. it's perfectly okay to ask for the name because you need to say their name multiple times in the conversation. <laughs> you do. Really? Yeah. Okay. People love their name. Everyone loves their own name. Really good book on this topic, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Oh, yeah. Every single person, every single man that it does not get any attention from women right now or, or wants to get attention from women should read this book, seriously. And just apply some of, just even some of the principles in this book will be an absolute game changer for your game. So if I said, like, say if I came up to you in the gym and I was like, hi. Hello. Like, hi, I'm James. What's your name? Norma. No, oh, hi, Norma. Hey, good. And then I was just like, how's your how's your workout? Yeah, from? you can say something like that, or yeah. you can say, oh, good form. Good. Oh. <laughs> that just sounds so perfect. Oh, yes, you have very good form. I've been watching you. No, that's, no, that's a that's a compliment. Or you can say something oh, nice, nice about that. Ass. Guys, <laughs> or... Okay, so here we have seafood laksa, prawns, mussels, and what was the other one? Prawns, mussels, and another type of seafood, I can't remember. Scallop, Scallop or octopus, maybe. Rice noodles, egg. Then here we've got grass-fed beef lamb broth. Um, grass-fed beef with bone broth again rice noodles uh, and some beef meatballs I'm guessing and then what have you got Norma? Um, 
halloumi salad with asparagus and some veggies. Oh, nice. Mm. Oh yeah, this is epic. I love this one. Is it socially acceptable for me to drink out the bar? Just do it though. I can crap it out and I'm gonna I'm not gonna post that. Otherwise they'd be here all day. Do the Asians do this? Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell anyone that. It's like they shit this dude. This is perfectly normal in Asia, apparently. I just decided. That's the starter done. Okay, now it's time for the seafood laksa. Spicy. Yeah. It's like creamy, spicy. The octopus is nice. Nice consistency. The octopus? What's this? Octopus, right? Yeah. So in here, there's mussels, octopus, prawns, chilies, rice noodles. Mm. Okay, this is good. Nice. Oops. I'm making a mess everywhere. What's your biggest turn off when a guy, like when you meet the guy at the very beginning, like? What what should he absolutely not do? Like things to avoid. Say if you just start speaking with a guy, or maybe you've met a guy, or maybe you're on a first date. What should you what should a guy absolutely not do? If he does that, it just kills him. I think this is a good person like Oh yeah? Okay. I don't know, for me it's like when and I just meet a guy and then like, he's really showing that like, he's all over me. Like, you know. He's too keen. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just like, mm, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Gotta play cool guys. Don't be too keen. I mean, it's good to show the interest, but not. So how how do you get the balance? Like, what is the right balance? It's I don't know. It's hard to explain. I don't know. For me, if it's if the guy's like, uh, let's say he, he we're texting. Yeah. And then he says something, and it's like, oh, it's wrong. And then he keeps, you know, like repeating, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Apologize. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Guys, never apologize. No, it's not like, no, no, it's not like that. Don't listen to me. That was bad. I mean, it's, it's just like when you apologize once, and that's it. It's just be more assertive, right? Yeah. You know, for me it's like when he does that, I feel like oh, it's too feminine. It's feminine, yeah? You want a masculine man. So, it's all, it's all well and good saying, oh, you've got to be masculine. But, it's not talking about it. Like, how do you know if a man is masculine when you meet? So I don't know. For me, I think when he's really grounded, grounded, you know, like it's I don't know how to explain. Like, yeah, like a man, you know. It's well, not calm. like 
calm and also but not nervous. Not, not nervous. nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nervous, like showing if you're. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Don't be excited. Just be calm, cool, collected. Cool. Yeah. But I mean, that's that takes time, right? It's good saying don't be nervous, but if you never ever go on dates, yeah, if yeah. you get one date in like five years, you're gonna be a little bit nervous. But just don't show it. You know, the things you can do, do breath work beforehand, get yourself in a parasympathetic state. Yeah, going to yoga class. Or do meditation. Yeah. That shit will help. Yeah, I don't like when the guy is too nervous. Because it makes you more nervous as well, right? No. Doesn't I just help? feel like, okay, you know, like the power is here with <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> It just turns me off, I don't know. I've had it before where a girl is super nervous. And the energy is just rubbing off on me. I'm like, whoa, hang on. Why am I like feeling really clear just because she's here? But I just usually just address the situation. I'm like, hey, are you nervous? And then I just bring it up. And then like, once you address the elephant in the room, it's just, it's just better. It's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, me too. It's okay. Okay. Relax. Breathe. Okay, so don't be nervous. Don't be too keen. What else? We need to give these guys the sauce. The secret stuff. They want to know the magic words that you can say and they'll just get that girl clap to their place and you know everything else. Don't make future plans. Like if you okay. meet on the first day, throw ideas out as to oh yeah, we could do that. Oh yeah, that that would be fun for us to do. But don't make any concrete plans. Like do not try and make any concrete plans on the first day. Mm. Also, after the first day, wait for her to message you. Do not message her. Oh no, 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 that's bad. <laughs> That's bad. It's not bad. Why though? Why? Because then, then you're, then you know she's interested, and you're not just a placeholder. Because some girls, what they will do is, they won't be interested in you, but just because they'll have no other offers on the table, no one else is trying to take them out at the moment. They'll be like, oh. Well, this guy's super keen. He's going to take me out. I get a free dinner out of it. You know, why not? The way you avoid that is by no, by letting them message you first. I mean, it could still happen if she's a shark, if she's like a professional user. It could still happen, but uh, not nearly, nearly as likely. I don't, I don't know. I don't care. That's okay. So you think a guy should message you first? Um. Yeah, I think it's good to you know, like say something like, "Oh, it's really nice to be with You got a muscle? Okay. Sorry, carry on. But not like showing from your interest that you're interested to me. It's, I think it's always good to say, "Oh, that was great." I don't know, okay, that's a good point. I would actually say that in person at the end of the day, right? So say you meet each other, maybe you drive her home or, you know, she's getting in a taxi or you say him bye, wherever it is. Say, hey, I had a great time today. Let's do it again sometime. But don't make plans, just throw it out there, like let her know that you want to see her again, but do not make any plans. I like that. And don't message her. Let her message you. If after a week, or if after seven days, then maybe message her if you really like her, I would just find another one. That would be my advice. Oh, probably the most important thing. Rule number one of dating 
Do not have a scarcity mindset. Do not believe that this girl is the best girl ever and she's the best girl you're ever going to get because if you think like that, you will fuck it up. 100% you'll fuck it up. You've got to, you've got to have the belief that there's 4 billion women on the planet. Like, if this one doesn't work out, you might find a better one next week. Like, if you maintain that frame and that mindset all the time, you will be so much better at dating. Same for girls. Same for girls as well, yeah. 100%. Otherwise, you're going to be like, you know, sex. As soon as you start fantasizing over, like, say you've just met this person and then you start daydreaming about, oh, we could go on holiday together. What would it be like with this guy? You know, what, what would our kids look like? You know, all this crazy stuff that you sometimes think about sometimes. Even though you've just met someone and you don't really know them yet. As soon as you start thinking like that, kill it. Kill those thoughts because that is just a one-way ticket to heartbreak. I think that's mostly for girls though. Like, they always have something in their head, like they're creating their own story. Like, you know, they're sizing about something. Mm -hmm. I think the way men brain things is different, right? No, yeah, men do as well. Really? Yeah. I know it's all for a girl. It's not like, okay, you should message me first. Yeah. And no one is like, you know, what is? what if you meet the girl that is really, really like toxic? And then, like, or maybe culturally passive. Huh? There are some, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to message this guy, man, because man has to chase. Only to chase no. Men do not have to chase. Men don't have to chase. If you're chasing all the time, you're going to have a shitty relationship. The best case scenario for a man, for a man, is when the woman is chasing. That is the absolute best case scenario. I don't think it's of course you wouldn't think that. You'd want it to be the other way around because the one chasing is the, the one without the power. No, you need to find like perfect balance. Yeah, perfect balance. But again, like what I said on the first point about obsession, it's the same. It has to be in the right amount of no. But what is the right amount? Well, never double text. Never double text. Never. If you've known each other for a while, it's fine. But at the beginning, never ever double text. So after the first day, how is a guy going to know if it's gone by? Like? I think you, you could tell. Like her behavior. You know, like the way maybe she will thank you first after when she go home. And when you said, like, let's do that again sometime, you can be like, oh, shit. Mm, well, girls would say that anyway. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Never listen to what a girl says. Watch what she does. That is a key one. Because they will give you false positives all the time. Yeah, we should definitely do this again. That means I don't want to see you ever again. I think, I think that's okay. No, it depends how it's said, but that does happen. Not to me, obviously, but it does happen. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, man, that was so good. I would give that... I would give that an 8.5 out of 10. <laughs> Between the two, I would say it's a draw. I can't pick a winner. I'd give them both 8.5 out of 10. What would you give yourself? Seven. Seven. Seven's pretty good. I don't know how strict your scale is. Seven. Happy? Yeah. Good cool. Thumbs up for mostly. So that meal was. Forty dollars. Not bad. Oh, this place, the best ice cream in town. Two dollars eighty six. How is it?
Wow, it looks Three. good. You want some? Okay, if I have to. Thumbnail. Ne needs to be you licking the ice cream. No. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be half. <laughs> Come on, give Whoa. us a thumbnail now, man. Come on, stick the tongue out. Yeah. Oh wow. Yes. We're gonna get like what one million views. <laughs> yeah, we will do. How to make a girl happy? Buy her ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> 